What's going on everybody? Good morning, happy Saturday, the day before the storm. So we have a DD-13 and this is gonna be a 20, let's see what the year is, 2012, 2013 with a DD-13 and we have a EEC-61. Now all that means is it's an after treatment fault code. We've got a solid yellow light, which is a malfunction light. Uh, let's see, we have solid here. It's flashing on the camera, but for some reason it's not flashing here, which is good. Let's take a look and see what we have. So again, this is a DD-13. Let's go into the fault codes. Let's see what it reads. It's loading. So let's quick, quick look. And for some reason, it's taking a little bit longer than others. There we go. All right. So kind of the, let's see what we have. Start over. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do too much and I can't, I got to focus here. So, okay, guys, let's see if that's a little bit better. So what we have is a regen temperature out of range low. That's going to be SPN 3556 FMI one. Now that typically means that the regen while it was going um, exactly that out of temperature, probably not getting hot enough. Uh, we could have an issue where the diesel doser might be getting plugged and I'll show you that right now in a second. Uh, the other thing to do is to do a parked regen and then see where the temperatures are at. However, fuel level is a little low and the only reason I'm always worried about that is because DD15s and DD13s do not like to run low on fuel. I don't like it, I don't recommend it, but I understand, uh, you know, things depend on your financial situation and the way things are going. But again, try to avoid this. I'm gonna see what I can do on a regen really quick just to see where the temperatures are, but I'm also gonna pop the hood first. And I'm gonna show you what to look for. Okay guys, first thing first, if you have a regen out of range, regen temperature issue, what I like to do first thing first is start with the doser. I've showed you this before in our video. So what you're gonna do is remove this fuel line. It's gonna be the number 14. You're gonna need a number 12. Once this comes off, just kind of move it to the side. You're going to remove the actual diesel doser injector or diesel doser valve. And then you're gonna look inside and inspect for any kind of blockage or soot in this area. So if you see that, clean it out. I usually just get a wire coat hanger or something like that and just kind of get in there and brush it out. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, okay, so like I mentioned, you're gonna get your number 12 and you're gonna get your number 14 and go from there. So again, 14 is gonna do this. There we go. And then 12 in the background. I'm gonna put the phone down because I cannot record and do also one hand. I use this to hold it and center it because of every now and then these two will start to go together. And then you're gonna loosen that up. Like I said, back this up or back it out and go for it. All right there. guys, so once you loosen that up, again, you're gonna go ahead and just completely back this thing out. Now go take it out all the way. It might be a little warm. Yeah, it's not too bad if you're not gonna die. Back that off with your hand. And again, just move it to the side. See, look, nothing will happen. Again, don't overdo it because it is kind of like a brake line. And the last thing you want it to do is brake. You're gonna get this, your 12. There we go. And then the same thing. Now this one has larger thread. This has a lot more smaller thread. So it's a little bit longer to take out. And you're gonna go ahead and back this whole thing out. So let me turn the camera off, back it out and I'll show you what I see in a sec. Okay guys, so now we have the diesel doser valve removed. There's a little bit of carbon buildup on it, not bad at all. Hold on, it's not really focusing, it's kind of focusing more on my hand. There we go. So all I'm gonna do is get a wire brush, very soft bristle, clean that off. I'm gonna put a little bit of shop air through the back, make sure it's spraying out. So you're gonna get some diesel go through here, that's fine. And then what you're gonna wanna do, get a flashlight. And let me flip this camera okay. around. Go ahead and look inside there. Kind of hard to see it looks pretty clean from here but i'm going to get a flashlight just to be sure and then i'm going to get something like a bristle or brush and poke that all the way through just to clean it out that's the first thing i'm going to do and then the next thing put it all back together and then do a park region and see what all right guys so i went ahead and cleaned this off as you can see you can tell it's nicely brushed put some shop air through it it looks pretty good i already used the uh old official tool here a little bit of a hanger or a wire i'm just going to use something like this it should fit uh let's see I don't want it to get stuck in there and then I'm screwed. Hold on, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right, I'm gonna hit it with some shopper. I should probably get something a little bit smaller than this. This might be a little bit too thick, too wide. Uh, like I said, a little bit of shop air. We're gonna put everything back in the reverse order, connect everything, and then do a region and see where the numbers are. Okay, guys, there. went with something a little bit thinner, not as wide, softer bristle. Looks like it's nylon. I got this over at, I think, Harbor Freight. But anyway, it comes in handy. And again, all you're gonna do is clean that out as best you can. Okay, once you do that, 
get your doser valve and you're gonna insert it back into its location. So let's see here, there we go, a little bit better. So get that in all the way, you're gonna tighten that down. Um, and like I said, put everything back in the reverse order that you started. So. There we go. All right, we're gonna get our 12 wrench. You can use a socket too, a socket actually fits. All right, that's in. You're gonna get this little bad boy. Put that right back in there. Hold on, there we go. And then just tighten that down. Let's see if the camera can show that. All right. And then you're gonna get your 14. Tighten that shit down again. All right, we're all done, secure. Okay, let's go ahead and do a regen. Let's see what the numbers okay, are. Okay guys, we are back. So let's see here, what the hell's going on? Okay, so we still have the code for regen temperature out of range. Now it's an active code. So you're still gonna get, oh, we got a check engine line going on too. Let's see what's going on here. MCM, PT, blah, 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 blah. All right, well, I'm gonna just do a quick little clear all temporarily. It may come back, it may not come back. And then right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a parked regen. So that being said, you're gonna go to your service routine. What the hell's going on here? Something's not communicating. I have no communication to the MCM. All right, so I'm gonna cycle the key. That's probably why we have that code. Let's cycle the key and let's see. Okay guys, it appears that we had a small communication issue with the MCM and the CPC, but everything seems to be coming back online. So. Like I said, we're gonna be doing a park regen really quick just to see what the temperatures are. Uh, let's see here, let's get this stuff out of the way. We're gonna to go to your bottom left. Again, service routines. There is a little file here that's gonna pop up or it should pop up and it'll say DPF whenever it's in communicating. So be patient. Okay guys, we're back. Now we've got some good communication on here. Uh, regen cannot start, I wonder why. Hmm. Engine speed. We definitely got something going else here. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and do a park regen. Let's see what happens. So first thing first, of course, before doing any regen, make sure oil pressure is good. Fuel, I can't do anything about that. We're gonna work with what we've got. I'm not gonna, probably not gonna do a full regen, but I, again, wanna see at least what the numbers are. So that being said, service routines, DPF system, Park regen, start, yes. And let's see what happens. All right, so it's gonna start doing a regen. It's gonna ramp up and do its normal thing. And I will keep you posted as we go along. Again, I don't wanna be doing a long, boring video, but it, everything seems to be okay. Let me roll up the window here a little bit, guys. Hold on. Okay, so the first thing I like to look at the temperatures will start to rise. We're not worried about that just yet. So the first thing I look at with this particular model in this series is the intake throttle valve. Should be at about 75%. That means the throttle valve itself, instead of staying open, it's actually closing, which is good because it's gonna produce heat. Your jake brakes, those will start to turn on at 100%. And again, the idea behind that is it's gonna generate heat and start passing that shit down towards the filter to warm things up. Let's, there we go, let's open that up right now. So right now what you're gonna notice on this screen it says pending engagement so in other words it's got to get hot enough once it does that it's going to do a quick little balance a little self check there and it'll start to do the regen and bring the temperatures up so what we're going to look at is going to be the doc inlet doc outlet and then the dpf but i'm going to show you that as we go along right now i'm not going to worry about the scr system which is going to be your nox efficient efficiency and stuff like that that's not really what i'm testing for right now again we're going to go back to dpf system and we're gonna look at these temperatures that they're gonna to start to rise. Again, always be aware of oil pressure and fuel levels. So for now, let me let this warm up and I'll be right back. So we are a few minutes into this, no big deal, nothing exciting. Again, what we're looking at right now is the temperature on the DOC inlet 560, DOC outlet 555, and then 481. So the temperatures look like they're rising as they should. Once it re reaches a certain threshold, usually about 10 to 15 minutes in, you're gonna, about five minutes in, you're gonna get this little pop-up. And then about 10 to 15 minutes in, the doser will actually start to work. Then these temperatures will rise like the way they should. Again, still keep an eye on my throttle valve, which is solid, it's consistent at 75%. Sometimes it goes a little bit higher depending on the model. DOC inlet pressure looks good. 
0.35. That's actually pretty good. Should be a little bit higher, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, that may be something internally, but again, as long as it's not a high number, I'm not all that concerned. Again, regen is now active. If you can see that right there, regen active. That means the temperatures are where they should be. Again, once this reaches where it's supposed to be, the actual dosing will start. That's the meat, that's the fuel. That valve that we just cleaned up, that injector that we just cleaned up, that'll start to open up probably about 10%, maybe 20 on the high side. And again, then the temperature will rise a little bit higher here. And then this will rise to about a thousand and then about a thousand. So just to keep you so up. One to thing to note, you're gonna wanna see where the DPF zone is at right now. So what you do is you go over to your instrumentation I usually go here where it says EGR, if you can see that little tab, tap on that. And then you're gonna look on down right around the middle, it's gonna say what zone it's in. If it's zone zero, that means it's perfectly clean and a regen isn't needed. Number one, it will gradually increase to one, to two, to three, depending on what's going on. If you're in traffic, if you're idling a lot, whatever the case is, it'll jump to one. Uh, number two, by then you're probably gonna get something on your dash saying, hey, do a regen or a park regen. So for now, it's at one. After this region is successful, it'll go back down to zero. So I'm gonna leave it be for now. Um, once we're done with the successful region in about 40, 45 minutes, it should go back to zero. So for now, I'm gonna go over here to this side. And then I'm just gonna keep my eyes on the temperature. See, there you go. So the percentage, 12%. Once this reaches a certain temp, it will open this up and start to dose. This will start to jump up, slow, or gradually increase, I should say, not jump. 900, 1,000, maybe 1,100 degrees. Same thing for this, this will always follow. So it kind of does a little bit of a scale. Okay, so again, keep an eye on that. So far, so good. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted. So we are back again, looking at the progress of the regen. Very, very happy again. Throttle valve is solid and consistent. Pressure is good at 0.5, which is good. Temperatures, as I mentioned, this will stay low well it'll rise to a certain point it stays there and then you have your doc outlet and your dpf outlet these two again will almost mirror each other okay they're going to stay pretty close this one usually trails a little behind but they're still within the same ballpark percentage 12 percent. that's good sometimes again it's a little bit higher a little bit lower depending on what's going on the fuel line pressure 24 psi that is good so we're still doing a regen now i'm just going to go for shits and giggles over to the ser side you're gonna see that right up there. I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna look at the NOx efficiency. Right now at 98%, that is solid. That is a very, very good number for the NOx efficiency. But again, we're only, let's see here, we started at 1145. We're only 15 minutes into the regen. I'm gonna let the regen run all the way. Pressure's still good. Fuel, make sure again, keep an eye on that bad boy. Don't let it go too low. Uh, we'll be back. We are back. We are still at about 15 minutes. Actually, no, I take that back. We are 15 plus 10, so what is that, Dud? 20, almost 25 minutes into a park regen. Again, takes about 40, 43 minutes, 45 minutes. Oil pressure is good. Fuel level is still good. Again, keeping an eye on that. Let me show you what's really important right now. Again, throttle valve is good. Pressure is good. Temperature is good, as long as this doesn't start to drop. If this starts to drop at a certain point, the regen or the dosing will stop because it has to maintain that temperature. Uh, that could be a different problem, but for now, it's staying consistent. DOC outlet, 1,000 degrees. DPF, 1,000 degrees. Again, these two follow each other. This is the leader, this follows. That's just the way it is because the heat naturally progresses from DOC in, DOC out to DPF, okay? So, so far, so good. Let's see what the regen NOx efficiency is. 98%, that's really good. So again, so far, so good. I'm liking these numbers. Uh, hold on, let me go back over to the DPF system. So again, that's where we're at. We're only about 20, 25 minutes into this. Uh, we still need another roughly 20 more minutes to go. So I'll be back and I'll show you guys the progress as we progress. We are back again and let's see what we have. We have a successful region. Unfortunately, I was not able to record that. I was out of the truck. So 1145 is when we started. You can see that there and the current time right now is 11. 23 so what does that work out to be 23 plus 15 more minutes so i'm going to call it about 40 minutes roughly for a regen which was good the nox efficiency was awesome that was in the upper 90s i'm really happy with that the temperatures and the pressure were good so i guess the whole point of this video guys if you have a fault code let me show you that regen temperature out of range low start with the basics don't start thinking hey i gotta go 
bake my filters, bake my one box, and do all kinds of bullshit. Start with the basics. Number one is gonna be your diesel doser valve or the seventh injector. I showed you guys that. Um, clean that out. That just usually means there's some, there might be some blockage. It doesn't mean, however, your box might not need some, some work or a little bit of love. But again, start off with the basics. This way you're not jumping to conclusions. Next thing you're gonna do is go to your instrumentation, EGR, and look at the DPF zone. In this case, it was one, we did a region, we're back to zero, which is really good. And then you're gonna go here, service routines, DPF, and you're gonna do a parked regen. So right now we are completely done with the regen. Everything looks good, temperatures look good. Um, again, try to have more fuel than that, guys. Just don't push your luck. And then oil pressure is good. It was at 25. And then, of course, once it get hot, gets hot, it goes to about maybe 19 or 15 PSI. I'll show you the number right now in a second. Mechanical oil pressure, 15 PSI. Still pretty good. But we're still going to do an oil change on this. So that may change. The truck is overdue for an oil change. So, guys, if the video is helpful, if this works for you, I only ask for a few things. Like, like the videos. Share. Subscribe. If you have any questions, as always, give me a call. I don't mind answering them as best I can. That's pretty much it for now. Guys, have yourself a great day. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it.